to them. And uh, Chaser, you were talking about commander skills for Chung Mu. Without even thinking, there's your core build, there's your first 10. After that, I would go Adrenaline Rush because what destroyer doesn't like Adrenaline Rush? What ship in this game doesn't like Adrenaline Rush? It's just too damn good of a skill. Now, once you've taken that, now you start thinking about how do you want to play this ship? Are you playing it as a torpedo boat? Are you playing it as a gunboat? Are you... You're welcome, Wolf. Thank you for coming. Or, um, how do you want to set this up? Okay? If you're playing it more of a radar focus, there's always the chance to go consumables enhancements to get the extra duration of radar because the radar doesn't last that long. <sighs> Personally, I don't think it's worth. Um, you went with the tier 3 gun reload skill, Mabas. Okay, so Mabas is okay if you're going to go guns. Now, you're still far better off going Adrenaline Rush because with Adrenaline Rush, as you take damage, your your reload is quicker, right? It's, it's faster. So uh, early in the game, your reload isn't as useful. Later in the game, as you take more damage, it's more useful. That's the, that's the trade-off between these two skills. I Personally, torps, like... Oh, yeah. Embers is everything. so bad. Like, three points for 5%. Like, it, it, it would... Mm -hmm. If you want to take main battery A specialist, like there's some destroyer where mm -hmm. you take it for the guns, but it's probably the last skill I take on those builds because the cost it's reward like... ratio on this skill is so bad. Adrenaline rush is a waste of points? Wolf, what? Hard disagree. Did you see? Wolf, are you trolling? <laughs> Max bonus 10%. Yeah, so? That's 10% for everything! Main battery, torpedo tubes, secondaries, anti-air, airstrikes. That's huge! That makes your entire ship more effective. What do you mean the max is 10%? You get 10% at 50% hit points, the max is 20%. Correct. Mm hmm and, then, and you're dead. I mean, <laughs> look at that last game. I was reloading in 20 seconds at the end. 20 seconds, maybe even faster. Like you, you only need a qu to lose a quarter hit points, and Adrenaline Rush is better than a main battery A specialist. And that's just for the main guns, and doesn't take into account the torps and the AA. <laughs> now, Wolf, you said you have to be nearly sunk to get that 10%. No, you need to be 50% sunk to get that 10%. Um, okay, now... As a torpedo-based destroyer that relies on concealment, sure, if you're never, ever, ever being spotted and shot at. In a random battle, with subs, with carriers, probably gonna get shot at. I play a couple um, of my torpedo boats without a drunner and rush, but that's yeah. only on builds where I use three tier four skills where I go swift in silence and radio location, which is mm -hmm. my Yugumo, which is my set 44 and if i had a 21 point commander it would be on the kagero and yep. that's it so i have tried it on the jaeger i dropped it i went with the adrenaline rush because especially with swirsky it's just too good to pass up yeah if it's a if it's a buffed or enhanced it's even better right yeah so look yeah but yeah best block is not be there sure but how many times is that going to realistically happen in your games? That's the hard part. goes back to what I was talking about before with the commander skills. A lot of players think, oh, 100% all the time, this is active, or this is going to work 100% all the time, or whatever the scenario is. The reality of it is not that case. The reality of it is you're going to end up being spotted. You're going to end up taking shells. It's the same so, logic that Chima players without survivability expert use. Oh, I'm not going to get right. spotted, so I don't need the extra hit points. That that lasts about... Yep. I mean, if yep. you're got, just going to hack the border with your 20 kilometer drops, you might not get spotted, but you are also right. useless. I mean, <laughs> hey, you even, you even showed that uh, game, I don't remember off the top of my head which game it was, where you said, I don't need last stand, and that's what got you screwed, right? You took the torpedoes out the butt. Whereas you if you had last stand, you could have maybe maneuvered a little bit. Uh, makes you think about dropping swift and silent off your Shima captain? Why? I would drop it on the Shima captain because the Shima is a ship where you don't have the reload booster, you have the smoke, you're forced in it. 
So that means you obviously sometimes gonna use your smoke and use your guns from smoke. And if you ever want to use right. your guns, Swift and Silence is not good anymore. The only nice thing about about this with the Shima is it's one of the fastest ships in the game. So you add that 8%, it goes even faster. It's good, but it makes your guns worse. And the guns on the Shima are usable, mm -hmm. especially with the smoke. I would say, so... yeah, I would AR say is better. Swift and Silence. Swift and Silence is good in a competitive environment. Maybe ranked, but most definitely clan battles and King of the Sea. You need to get in a position as quickly as possible, right? That's what Swift and Silence is all about. But in those competitive cases, you're probably never going to use your guns except to finish somebody who's like, at, at you know, hanging on by, by a thread. And in which case, who cares what your reload time is? You're going to kill them anyway. But like I said, that's a very niche role. If you're looking at random battles and you're looking at co-op and... and, and, and uh, operations. Swift and Silence is going to help you. So, look, Chaser, let me get back to your build in the Chung Mu. Here's how I would build the Chung Mu. The next thing I would do is either go radio location, and if we've got a 21 point captain, that means I got four more points left to play with. I'm probably going to spec into the torpedoes here uh, for fill the tubes. I want to spam torpedoes as much as possible because that's my bread and butter in this ship. It's not your guns. Your guns are only useful for killing other destroyers that derp into your range and you want to punish. Torpedoes is where it's at because it's all about killing cruisers and destroyer or, or cruisers and battleships with them. And then for your uh, your last point, I would probably put it here in consumable specialist. Because what that does is it gets your radar up quicker if you're using radar. If you're using smoke, it doesn't matter as much. But look at the impact on your torpedo reload booster, right? That's the that's the big thing for this ship line. You want to be able to dump out torps as quickly as possible. So this is probably how I would spec up my Chung move. That's a standard if I, torpedo boat build spec. It's nothing wrong it is. with it. It is. Um, you could drop radio location if you don't think that that's useful and go for this and then pick up God, I don't know this Hon and something honestly, else. Honestly, if nah, if if you want to play this torpedo boat, I would take the radio location because nothing else gives you mm -hmm. a lot of value anymore. Mm -hmm. If you want to, the nice thing, like yes. obviously, if you want to go guns, you probably drop the torpedo reload. Like, yeah. Um, the nice thing, too, that a lot of players don't understand with radio location is it tells you where to look before you go and fire and, and whatever. Your guns are pre-turned. Your torpedoes are pre-turned at whatever's coming closest to you. So if you run into a destroyer, you, in theory, should already have your guns on target. It's beautiful for getting the upper hand in an engagement with the destroyer, right? A lot of people, if you if you don't play with radio location, how many times, chat, raise your hand right now if this happens to you, you're just moving along, minding your own damn business in a destroyer, and all of a sudden, an enemy destroyer pops up someplace that you completely didn't expect. So what do you do? Oh my god, and you're trying to turn your guns on a target. That's a waste of 5 to 10 seconds. 5 to 10 seconds, which can absolutely impact the engagement. So that's a part of radio location that I think a lot of people don't understand. Radio location is frustrating because it will jump 20 degrees randomly. Yeah, but it's still, I mean, hey, 20 degrees is still a lot easier than 180, you know? Like, seriously, I, I want to know where's my closest enemy, right? So that's what, why what? that's really handy. I, I'm not really sure what you mean by random <laughs> He's like saying it, sometimes it, it'll flip back and forth. I mean, it's because it's pointing towards a sector and, and like if a, if a destroyer Correct. is right on the edge. But that's actually good if it swaps be between those because then you can really pinpoint in what direction exactly he is because he needs to be right on the edge between those two sectors. Otherwise, it wouldn't flip. And there was a <laughs> battle. I need to think. I need to think back to this battle. I was casting King of the Sea with Sea Raptor. It was on Faro Islands. I think it was one of the loser bracket ones. I'm going to make a note to find this one. Um, there was... Uh, there was a... I 
think it was a I think it was Bonks and Elser. I think it was Bonks and Elser on on um on on my map on Faro Islands. They were using radio location to triangulate the closest enemy and and inform where they shot. And the crazy thing excuse me, the crazy thing was they weren't that far off. They were within half of a grid square of actually hitting something blind using radio location from three team members to know exactly where somebody is. It doesn't That's be... huge. I think a lot of people don't understand what what radio location actually points towards. Like it doesn't mm. point directly to a ship. It doesn't point to a grid square. Like it is right. really just you have your circle around your ship and you divide it in uh, how many right. sectors is it? It's 24, 30, 36 sectors. Uh, I'd have to look it up. But it just divides it in a sector and it it looks where the nearest ship to you is and yep. then the radio location points towards that sector. The, mm -hmm. the, the nearest ship could be anywhere in the sector. It could be to the left edge, it could be to the right edge, it could be right in the middle. You don't know right. that. Right. And let's go back to the why. If we were watching that King of the Sea battle, that ship would have been targeted and killed immediately. Why? Because there are mods that allow you to ping directly on the minimap and they will show up in the game as a ping. So if you draw a line with your pings on the minimap and your friend draws a line on the minimap, boom, that intersection, that's where you aim perfectly. So that's why Grunty says it's a grid square that radio location points to. And not a grid not square, the exact but location a, a of the sector. Ship. If you have the two radio locations thing. intersecting each other, you get a somewhat square size, but you you can you can you can aim closer. So that's why radio location is so helpful, especially on a torpedo destroyer. Know where know where to pre-turn your guns. For Chengmu, it's not so important because your your turret traverse is pretty quick. But for Shimakaze, for example, knowing where to put your guns, especially if you've taken Swift and Silence and you don't have that reload, it's huge. You need that initial saddle to just slap somebody. And then you pop your smoke and turn away and, and run. Or can, or stay with the engagement, depending. Can also help you land blind torping torpedoes because you know where the enemy is. Absolutely. Absolutely, and that's always fun too, right? If you I love if you guess right. <laughs> oh yeah, it's good times. It's good fun. So, anyway, um, I'm gonna release this later as a Zaf chat because uh, I love that we talk through the commander skills, and I think a lot of people really struggle with understanding how adrenaline rush is helpful, how radio location is helpful, and in general, how how would you want to build um, a ship to be useful? So. Guys, when this comes out on YouTube, please comment, tell me, was this helpful? Is there another ship you'd like me to feature uh, a commander build on? Maybe we can start a series on this. That might be kind of fun. We'll see. Anyway.